Fiction Bookworms, good to have you back. Today, April 23rd, 2016, is the 452nd birthday of William Shakespeare. In order to celebrate, I decided to dedicate an entire video just for him. And I was really in the mood for doing this sort of a list type of video. Now, there are so many things one can say about William Shakespeare and there are so many different approaches one can have to this sort of video. I feel like a lot of people think that if you're talking about William Shakespeare, you need to be serious, you need to analyze his plays, talk about a yambic pentameter in his poetry. But you know what? Shakespeare himself wrote not for the aristocracy, he wrote for the masses, he wrote for the common people. So I decided to just relax and take this whole video pretty lightly and simply share with you my top of five favorite Shakespearean characters and also my bottom, I suppose, five most uh, hated uh, Shakespearean characters. Now, since it's Shakespeare we're talking about, every single one of his characters is brilliantly written and absolutely fantastic for the plot. So, in terms of most hated or like worst characters, if you want to see it like that, I simply took characters that I personally didn't like their personality or maybe I wouldn't like to meet them in real life or I, you know, just didn't care for them. You shouldn't expect anything too sophisticated. And I do feel the need to say that it's kind of unfair judging Shakespearean characters according to our modern uh, standards, because his plays, uh, clever as they are, are not very realistic and should not be taken too literally. Just saying. But you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. So let's get started with my top five most beloved Shakespearean characters. Number five, Viola from the Twelfth Night. Viola may not be the bravest or the smartest character that Shakespeare ever written, but she is extremely likable. Maybe because she's kind of like an average woman. You know, sometimes in Shakespearean characters, women are either very, very clever and witty or extremely good, like holy and submissive. And Viola is kind of like an average woman that simply finds herself in very unusual circumstances in this brilliant comedy of errors. She finds herself on a strange island, she dresses up as a man, falls in love with the man she serves that sends her, thinking that she's a man, to woo for him uh, a woman that ends up falling in love with Viola because she also thinks that she's a man what would you do in that kind of situation? But Viola is very clever, very resourceful, but also very, very kind. I just really like her. Number four, Sir John Falstaff from Henry IV, part one and two. You know those characters that are like the court jester or the fool, but they turn out to be a lot smarter than anyone else around them? Well, Falstaff is definitely one of those characters. Usually those characters appear in comedies and Henry IV is definitely not funny. Falstaff is a knight, he's a sir, but he is a crook, he's a thief, he uh, cheats, he is constantly drunk, he's like fat, spends the entire day in the tavern, but he is so witty, so smart, so philosophical. He will tell you the truth in your face, whether you like it or not, which kind of make him the most honest character in pretty much the entire play, including the king. He will never pretend to be anything that he is not. And he's definitely, definitely one of those minor characters that steal the show. Number three, Rosalind from As You Like It. Rosalind is one of those characters that women love because she's a strong female character. She's also dressed up as a man for most of the play, which is interesting. But she does it in order to protect herself and her friend Celia. Rosalind is smart, she's witty, she takes initiative, she's funny. What more can you ask for in a girl? She does 
play a somewhat nasty trick on her beloved Orlando, but this trick ends up paying off because then they realize that they really love each other, that this is not some sort of a flat love at first sight sort of affair. So two thumbs up for Rosalind. Number two, Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream. At the beginning I was debating whether to put him or Nick Bottom here because he's such an idiot, but I'm glad I chose Puck. He's so likable, he's so funny, he's a very naughty boy, he plays tricks on innocent people, but he never really hurts them. He kind of reminds you of that clever fool kind of character that Shakespeare liked using, but make no mistake, Puck is no fool. Sometimes I think of him as one of those normal people who just find themselves in really strange situations and just need to somehow deal with it. It's just hilarious. I, I love him. He's, he's a trickster, but he's not an asshole. Actually, he's a lot nicer eventually than other characters in this comedy. And eventually everything ends well, so who cares if in the middle he turned the man into a donkey or caused the wrong man to fall in love with the wrong woman? Number one is a duo, but don't worry, the number one in the next list will also be a duo, but for this list, these are Benedict and Beatrice from Much Ado About Nothing. The reason I mention both of them is that they work best together, or maybe I should say against one another. Each one of them is painfully witty, really spiteful. They really hate each other until the very end when they find out that they actually love each other. Each one of them has sworn they will never succumb to the opposite sex, to marriage. Each one of them really hates the opposite sex. And every time they would meet, they would berate each other, they would insult each other, they would be mean in a witty way that only Shakespeare can write, which creates hilarious situations, especially after their bored group of friends decided to do some matchmaking. But comedy waiting at the end of the play. Benedict and Beatrice really do love each other eventually and you know that in their case if something bad should happen their love is strong enough to overcome it. And hey they are really really funny. Okay guys those were the five characters I love the most now let's go to the five characters I like the least. Number five Helena from Midsummer Night's Dream. Again Here's a funny little story. When I was younger, I was actually in a theater group that did Midsummer Night's Dream, and I was Hermia. End of story. Anyway, Midsummer Night's Dream has some really lovely characters, have some really bad sort of characters, like Oberon, who is willing to drug his ex in order for her to love him again, or Demetrius, who is, you know, a douchebag. But I decided to choose the traitor, Helena. Here's the story. Helena is Hermia's best friend. Hermia and Lysander are in love, but Hermia's father wants her to marry Demetrius, who does love Hermia, but she can't stand him. Helena is in love with Demetrius, but he can't stand her. Are you with me so far? Anyway, when Lysander and Hermia decide to run off together, the only person they tell is Helena, the best friend whom they trust. And what does she do? She goes and tells Demetrius because she thinks that uh, that will make him notice her, which by the way doesn't work. That's a betrayal of friendship and that's why, Helena, you're on my blacklist. Number four, Macbeth from Macbeth. I'll start by saying that Macbeth is my favorite Shakespearean play. But as much as Macbeth, uh, the char character in a play, is brilliantly written as a person, He's a coward, weak traitor. Yes, I have a thing with traitors. Here is the story. On his way back from battle, Macbeth encounters three witches that tell him that he's going to be a king. But there's already a king and this king has sons. So what does Macbeth do? He's, he goes home to his wifey, who just happened to be a greedy cutthroat. And she tells him that he needs to kill the king and his son. So he does. The reason he chose Macbeth and not his wife, aka 
Lady Macbeth is because he actually has the potential of being a good guy. I mean, you came back from battle, you're a decorated soldier and your wife tells you go kill the king and you just do it? And wait, hold on, it's not over yet. He also kills his best friend and his friend's wife and his friend's children. Spineless coward, but a great play. I really recommend you watch the version with Sir Patrick Stewart. It's really great and really creepy. Number three, Petruchio from Taming of the Shrew. Yes, it's Heath Ledger's character from 10 Things I Most Hate About You, uh, which is based on a play. But as much as Heath Ledger is cool, in the original play, Petruchio is the worst asshole you can imagine. He marries Catherine, who is known for her bad temper, and his job is to tame her. The feminist in me is already angry, but he literally abuses her. He denies her food and clothing because he claims that nothing in the world could ever be good enough for his beloved Catherine. He forces her to agree with everything he says, no matter how absurd, uh, like the fact that the sun is actually the moon and the man that they meet is actually a woman. Who does that? And the moral of the story is that women should obey their husbands. Wonderful. Number two. Angelo from Measure for Measure. Now this is a weird play. It has a lot of technically good characters who do really awful things, but I think that the spot here definitely goes to Angelo, who may have an angelic name, but he's far from holy. If he was a Disney character, he would have been Judge Claude Frollo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. In two words, religious hypocrite. He puts a man in death row over a technicality, he um, abandons his own fiancée over her dowry, he tries to corrupt a nun, yes, a nun, he tries to blackmail her into sleeping with him. Jesus Christ, no pun intended. But he's a man of God, so he's holier than thou. Don't you just hate those guys? And number one goes as promised to a duo, which are kind of like the mirror image of the first duo. They're probably the most famous Shakespearean characters ever, maybe you've heard of them. Romeo and Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. Every person who claims that these two stupid kids are the greatest love story in history have obviously never read a play. I mentioned in a previous video that in order for me to be really invested in a love story, they have to be, I don't know, real love story somewhere. Romeo and Juliet were two 12-year-old idiots who saw each other once, decided that this is love, had a love affair which lasted less than a week, and then they died. That's not being in love, that's being emo. Why is this considered such a great love story. Why? Because they, they died at the ending? Their suicide was so stupid. Jeez, even, even Hamlet and Ophelia had a better love story. I, I don't even consider this a love story. This is nothing. They didn't even know each other. They are two horny, rebellious kids who knew nothing about nothing and then killed themselves. So guys, please, don't just go with the flow because everyone said that Romeo and Juliet are the greatest love story, which they're not. Shakespeare had much better love stories. Some of them actually last. So guys, that's it for my video. Please comment down below and tell me what you think. Which ones are your favorite and least favorite Shakespearean characters? And tell me what you think about my uncontroversial Romeo and Juliet opinion. And regardless, I am thinking of doing more of these um, best five, worst five type of videos. Tell me what you think. Maybe there's a certain topic that uh, you would like to see. I would like to hear it. But thank you for watching this video. Like this video if you want to wish Bill Shakespeare a happy birthday. I'm sure you can see that. And subscribe to my channel if you dare. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.